It is the time crisis averted regarding food and supplies on our shelves. But is Christmas safe? Here's a man who'll know, Conservative MP and Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Secretary George Eustace. Congratulations on the government doing that deal uh, with a supply, increased supply of CO2 to UK businesses. It does appear that we're, we're over this hump, but how safe is Christmas? Good morning. Good morning. Well, look, there are globally quite a lot of pressures on the supply chain. As the world comes out of the pandemic and tries to get going again, um, we've got challenges on um, shipping. We've got um, spikes in demand for gas, which has uh, put the price of gas up significantly. And of course, you know, at home and, and right across Europe, there are some issues with labour shortages and you know, availability of labour does remain uh, a stress point on the food supply chain. But we're working you know, with industries, with logistics companies, uh, to address those so th- there are some there are some challenges but actually we do have a very resilient food supply chain uh, and um, the steps we've taken to ensure that there isn't a gap in supply of carbon dioxide will in particular make sure that people can still get access to, to good quality british chicken and pork my question was is christmas safe secretary of state uh, yes, it is. So Christmas is safe, of course, uh, but we, uh, but there are challenges in the uh, food supply chain, and uh, I'm not denying that. Um, so pressures on uh, labour, lack of labour availability, uh, pressures on logistics, all of these are causing some stresses. Uh, it does mean that you know in some areas. Um, the degree of choice in some supermarkets uh, is, is down slightly on what it would normally be. But we're working with the industry to make sure that we uh, get all the food that we need on the shelves for those all important weeks running up to Christmas. It's interesting you would say that because you'll be aware that some supermarket bosses, the MD of ICE and Richard Walker says, we have got a solution, but the industry can't carry on like this. The sort of, oh, we've just survived and we'll sort of just get over the next hurt. I mean, clearly, once the dust settles or the gas is processed, we need to look at a, a, a firmer and more definitive definitive solution to this. Uh, yes, the, the challenge with carbon dioxide is that the factories that make it are it's a highly capital intensive process. So you're talking about big factories manufacturing chemicals, manufacturing fertilisers in, in most cases. Uh, it's, it's huge amounts of financial capital that goes in and it means that it's a market that tends to be dominated by a few quite large players. Um, so it's different to a, a market where you might have a thousand small producers and if one has a problem or shuts down, uh, it doesn't affect supply. Supply. You know, in this sector, chemicals, some of these key ingredients, um, you know, if you get a couple of plants that are closed for maintenance because they have a breakdown, suddenly you, you get an issue. And there isn't an easy answer to that because, um, you know, you're not going to get thousands of companies investing the sort of capital required to do these processes. Uh, moving on to uh, another conversation, I don't, only, I don't know how many businesses in Camborne and Redruth were hoping for a trade deal with the US. I would imagine there would be some speciality supplies, but it looks like it was a, a, a no deal with President Joe Biden yesterday. How disappointed are you? Well, we still very much hope to do a trade deal with the United States. We've done about 60 trade deals around the world now, including, you know, um, agreement in principle with Australia and also an agreement with um, Japan. We would like to do a trade agreement with the United States. But in some ways, this isn't altogether surprising in that Joe Biden, even during his election, was clear that the trade agreements weren't a particular priority for him in the early part of his administration. But, you know, we've we've made some breakthroughs. We've uh, dealt with the uh, the problem of tariffs on whiskey, for instance. Uh, we've got access for British beef to the US market for the first time in decades. We're working on an agreement to get access for lamb. So although there's not a, a, an overall comprehensive trade agreement and the US have said this isn't a big priority for them at the moment, we are getting some breakthroughs in some individual product lines. Do, do, do you think a global deal will, with the between the UK and the US will be done in the lifetime of this parliament, Secretary of State? Well, look, we very much hope so. So we, we're, it's still uh, a priority for us to try to do a trade agreement uh, with the United States. But I think with any trade agreement, and the US is no uh, exception, it's better to get the details of, of that right uh, and not to rush it. And of course, you can only progress a trade deal if, if both parties want to invest the time to do so. So we've been um, in negotiations with the US uh, on a trade uh, agreement. We've always appreciated that it's not a, a huge priority for the Biden administration. And even from our point of view, you know, we want to make sure that we get the details uh, of that agreement right. Lastly, you'll be aware, I'm sure, of the issues of protests with the M25 and how these protesters have brought traffic to a halt, albeit their, their idea has a lot of uh, ground. It's perhaps the means by which they seek to achieve their end. Two of your colleagues, Priti Patel and Grant Shapps, are saying they're going to take action. Would you support tougher laws? 
Well, absolutely. I mean, what the the action that we're taking, and, and you know, by the way, you know, Grant Shapps and Priti Patel have been working closely with the police uh, since last Thursday, Friday, when these sorts of protests first started to uh, emerge. There were some challenges because these protesters sometimes glue themselves to the road. And to be fair to the police, it puts them in a very difficult position. But there's been some very robust policing over the last few days. Uh, what we are now doing as a government is applying for an injunction that will seek to to give them the powers to uh, to sort of act, if you like, preemptively before these sorts of dangerous protests take place. I mean, it, it is a danger uh, to road safety on a motorway to have people causing this sort of disruption. We all believe in the right to protest and uh, we'll always support that. But, but we've got to also balance that against other people's rights to, to go about their daily business but, and also road safety, which is obviously of critical importance. But, but couldn't a lot of this have been solved by the imposition of what was called police bail or is now pre-charge bail, whereby prior to even being charged with something, I, you can be bailed not to visit, not to come with within a mile of the M25 or whatever the deemed as surely that should have been imposed last week secretary of state well, look, there's always an escalation of interventions that you'll have uh, in these sorts of situations. So initially you will uh, try to deal with a protest and persuade people having made their point to move on. When that doesn't work, as it didn't, the police then uh, intervened and started forcibly uh, removing people. Um, with, with people returning, um, they're now going to the next uh, step, which is the right escalation, which is to seek an injunction so that they have those powers to act preemptively. Grateful as ever for your time. Thank you. Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Secretary George Eustace appearing here at LBC where the time is eight. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, ministers are seeking an injunction against the environmental protest group which has caused major disruption on the M25. Activists from Insulate